Okay, loved ones, just a few things I want to mention before you watch this video because this is going to help with the comments and everything. Um, I get these particular comments quite often that I'm about to address. Number one, when you're in a store in like a Goodwill that has metal shelves and uh, concrete floors, the cell phone amplifies every click and clang. And so I am not being disrespectful and tossing and banging things around. It just sounds like that. Now, I know I have been accused of being a bull in a china store, but I'm really not slamming things. There's just this amplification. And uh, it, it happens to all of us. All of us who, who film in stores, we get these comments quite often. So I want to tell you that. I also want to tell you that I don't buy and sell anything after the mid-60s. I'm just not into it. So a lot of times people will say, Oh my goodness, you just walked by that, you know, longy burgy basket. I know it's longer burger. I'm making fun of it. And yes, they're valuable, but I don't buy and sell them. I don't care about longer burger baskets. Um, so I deal in anything older than, you know, the mid 60s. Uh, so I'm not a thrifter who or a reseller who just buys and sells anything of value. I buy and sell the things that I'm interested in and that fit into my shop, which is turn of the century into the 60s. Uh, so I pass by anything that's new. The next thing I want to say is, the, and okay, when I'm in Goodwill, when I'm, when I'm, I'm working. I mean, this, these stores are my office, so it's not sort of just a casual shopping trip. And I think when a lot of people are watching, if you aren't reselling or buying to resell for profit or as a business, um, you're viewing things differently. You're, you're viewing it through the eyes of just sort of casual enjoyment of shopping. That's different. See, when I'm in a shop, like the one I'm getting ready to go in, I'm working. And so I'm thinking all the time, okay, how much is it gonna to cost to ship it? Do I have the right size boxes? Uh, what does it sell for? How long is it gonna take me? Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot that goes into, it's not just, well, it's not an emotional thing at all when, you, when you're buying things to resell. Um, so you will see me pass by a lot of things and I'm not being snobby at, uh, or, or too picky um, at, you know, certain things. It's just that time and effort-wise, it doesn't pay me. And I've said this before, but I just want to repeat it because I, I get all the time, Oh my goodness, you just walked by that fill-in-the-blank. And I'm always answering comments and saying, Yes, but that piece of Noritake is great. It's from 1910. It's in good condition. It's only $2, but it only sells for $2. And so I have to make decisions quickly about what I'm going to buy or not buy. So, you see, if I buy five items for $2 each, right? And I've spent 10 bucks. It takes me the, it takes me, uh, a tremendous amount of time to list those five items whereas I would much rather spend my ten dollars on one item that might bring me a twenty dollar profit because then I can list that one item maybe in ten minutes as, a spo as a, opposed to spending a whole hour or more listing several smaller items. I don't sell in a brick and mortar shop. I used to. My late father and I did that for over 15 years. I'll show you pictures one of these days. We had a huge space in an antique store. It was not a co-op or an antique mall. Um, and we, de we dealt in antique furniture. Sold very little bric-a-brac, almost none at all. It was, it was mostly furniture. If I was still selling in a brick and mortar shop, it's easy to pick up a trinket, blow the dust off of it, rip off the Goodwill tag, and just run it in and stick it in the shop and put a price tag on it. 
but to take things home, clean it, wash it, price it, research it, you know, there's a lot that goes into listing, and I'm a one-man band. I don't have a staff of 20 people waiting to do it. I, I do it all. So, I hope that helps you understand that the, and actually I'm filming this after I have come out of my first shop. It's going to make sense when you see the rest of this video. The shop that I was just in, I walked by a lot of really nice stuff that I could have bought for $2 and sold for $5, but instead I paid $3 for a Pyrex dish that'll sell for $20. And that's a decision that I quickly make. I've already sold many of these. I have stock photographs of them in good condition, which I could use, or I could take new pictures. This will literally take me five minutes to list it, and I'm going to make at least a $15 profit on it. And so, you see, I, I'm talking fast, but because this is probably not why you tune in. You don't want to hear all this ramble, ramble. But I hope it helps you understand why there's certain things that we as, as uh, whatever you call us, sorcerers, resellers, antique dealers, uh, because of time and effort and the cost involved, there are certain things that we just leave on the shelf. Now, if I was buying for pleasure and I had a huge empty china closet in the corner waiting to be filled, I could just go out and buy all kinds of, you know, cool little cutesy things and pay whatever and not have to think anything of it. So when you're watching, remember, many of you are watching as maybe casual shoppers, but I am shopping as a business person trying to make wise decisions about what I buy so that I don't have to spend 24 hours a day at this job and I'm able to, you know, enjoy other things in life. Okay, so now... Let's get inside and you'll actually see the things that I don't buy and why I'm not spending a whole lot of money today. Thanks for joining me. It's cold. Okay, my goal today is to stay focused and not necessarily come home with volume, but my goal is to actually buy as little as possible <laughs> because if I put one more dish in that building that I live in built in 19 built in 1899 the floor is gonna cave in uh, so anyway I'm gonna be very selective today the sales are orange and pink and uh, here we go I'll show you some things. I'll, I'll pick some things up and show them to you. I won't necessarily give commentary because most of these, the things that I pick up, you, I think you guys are already familiar with. Uh, such as that. You don't need me to give you the whole history of Gay Fad and Fire King um, because it's been documented so many times on other YouTubers' channels. But that's what it is. $2.99. Nice to find it with its lid. That's actually not bad, and it would probably sell for 10 to 12. Okay, here's a recent sale from eBay of the very item that I was just looking at in the thrift shop. Uh, you can see that it's two dishes, but only one has a lid, and the winning bid was $8.99 without shipping, and the buyer paid, yeah, the buyer paid $6.99 shipping. So you can see that um, one dish with a lid, and I didn't even look to see if there were any chips or cracks or what the condition was, but uh, nine bucks for one. So again, and uh, this is one I just decided to leave on the shelf. Now, if I was buying it as a collector, it would be a great deal. Bring it home and use it. But I chose to uh, not purchase this one. Okay, back to the show. But again, as I said, I'm being very selective today. I'm trying not to bring anything home unless it's really a home run. I'm really looking for things today that... I could probably make at least, you know, 20, 15 to 20 dollars profit on simply because I have so much to do and I have to think about this is a business and time is money and I just, I just don't have the time right now. There's just running out of time.
and I don't have an unlimited storage space so it's not like I can just buy everything and box it up and, and wait until the springtime or when I'm snowed in I, I just don't have that kind of space so that's why I'm kind of being picky picky English rural, rural scenes A little depression piece right there four bucks it's cute I like pattern glass. Do you guys like early American um, pressed glass, pattern glass? I do. It doesn't sell very well. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Want to play the guessing game? Who made it? We'll never know. I'm not going to take that sticker off. Uh, I see what looks like an imperial shape down here. There's a bowl that's in crystal that's got some iridescence on it and it looks like a, the shape of an imperial bowl which would be right here. They did a lot of this in Carnival. I think it's got a nice sort of an icy iridescence. Oh, it's signed. Wait a minute. Oh, it is imperial. You see that? It's, it's usually... I don't know if you can try to focus. There we go. See that? Imperial glass, wonderful. Sometimes it is signed like that. This probably dates to about somewhere between 1905 and 1925, the first 25 years of the 19th of the uh, 20th century. Uh, I don't know how well the iridescence is showing up. It's okay, but it's just four dollars. I don't think I could do much with it. Okay, this is usually the way I find this bowl uh, in the typical orange color, marigold, um, tangerine, and I think the pattern is called broad panel, but I don't remember that to be certain. And it is Northwood. This is Northwood. These bowls were made after the turn of the century, 1905, in, up to about 1930, during the time that uh, Carnival Glass was popular, and companies like Northwood were making this to offer... Um, I don't want to say the common man, what should I say? The, the average household who wanted nice things and nice glass, who couldn't afford Tiffany and Steuben and, and uh, Lotes and so forth, they could easily get a piece of this glass and it really looks beautiful. Here's another example in stretch. The example in the store was not in stretch, it was just plain old uh, iridescent. Okay. Oops, that's quite all right. I was just in a cart accident. No injuries. Dream homes at the Jersey Shore. Maynard's Cafe. Larry's Limo, Philly and Newark. Okay, I know you, I know everybody saw that Wheat Pirates down there, right there, but I'm not getting it. Nothing wrong with it, just, I'm not gonna do Pyrex. Not that uh, pattern anyway, not today. I really want to get better at this. Now, I'm not really, I must admit, uh, 
when it comes to sterling silver, I just don't pay much attention to it. And um, living the good life, boy, she, she's got that down pat. She's good at it. You watch her channel. And uh, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm just not very good at determining whether it's sterling or not. I'm sure I've walked by silver many times. You know, not silver plate, but actual, actual sterling. Pretty. Pewter bowl. Sometimes this old pewter is valuable too. And here, in the Northeast, just outside of Philadelphia, we still have a lot of old pewter banging around. What's this? Georgia. On my mind. What's that? Some little Englishman hunting. Good, I don't see my nemesis. She's not here today. Ha 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 ha. Okay, what did you spy first? The Stangle, I think, or the Fire King? Now, I know you know this, these French onion soup bowls, a lot of people call them chili bowls. And remember, it's not peach luster when it's, util when it's cookware, it's copper tint. That is how it was marketed by Anchor Hawking. Four bucks, can't do much with that. And then this piece over here, uh, yeah, Stangle. You know, some Stangle does really well and some doesn't. This doesn't really look Christmassy. It looks like cabbage leaves to me. I don't see any chips on it. Uh, at $4, I really don't know. I'm gonna look this up. I will put it in my cart and look it up. I have a feeling it's a maybe eight to twelve dollar piece and so that at four dollars that doesn't meet my goal today for trying to just pick up things that would bring me fifteen to twenty dollar profit margin and again I'm not being a snob I want you guys to understand it's a matter of uh, volume and how much time I have to actually photograph and list okay what you do not see off camera is when I pull my cart to the side I get out of the aisle as not to block anyone and I go to a a, a dark quiet corner and I do my uh, research and turns out indeed here it is uh, Stangle pottery green double leaf candy dish with gold tone handle is how it's being described here the person selling it is asking nine dollars and ninety five cents or best offer they have not been able to sell it and when I did a quick check on the sold items this particular plate, there are no um, examples of it ever selling in the last 90 days. Now that's on eBay. That's not to say that it didn't sell on Etsy or some other site. But what I can tell you is that this dish does not sell. It didn't sell at all in the last 90 days. That's three months, yes. And I don't know how long this one has been listed, but they can't even get $10 for it and they're taking best offer. So, the thrift store wants $4 for it. Am I going to buy it and bring it home and have it sit on the shelf for three months and then not be able to sell it? No. Okay, so research, research, research. Not all Stangle is created equal. Some of it is a big home run. A lot of the lamps, some of the Art Deco examples. So, gosh, you really have to study. Uh, and I hope this isn't annoying with me sort of breaking in and doing this, but... It, uh, it's just something that I kind of wanted to do, and I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments below. Do you just want me to shop and not break in and do these little uh, sidebars? Uh, I'm not going to make a habit out of it, but just something different. Okay, back to the store. So I do have to be selective. At least that's my goal for today. Let's spin around here. No, 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 no. There are a thousand of these online. It's uh, that iris and herringbone, Jeanette stuff. Four dollars. No, 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 no. No demand for that. Again. 
that's a really cool 1930s Art Deco pattern. I wish it didn't have wheat on it. I wish there was something Deco on there in terms of the de de decal. You want to see it? Edwin M. Knowles. And it's probably 1938. I'm not sure how they marked their pieces, but that 38-10 could be probably 1938. Okay, that fits. Very deco. And there's lots of it too, but I, I just don't know. I don't think this wheat pattern would do very well. There's a lot of it. Here's some poor little random ruby red depression saucers. I will look to see if I can find cups. 99 cents, that would be good. These are, these are, uh, oh rats, octagon. Yeah, octagon. And uh, made by several companies. That would be nice if the cups were here. I think we see some, uh, oh, come on brain, come on brain, is it Cambridge Capri, is it Capri or Caprice, Capri or pants, right, ladies, Capri pants, this is either Capri or Caprice, I think it's Capri, blue, and I think it's Cambridge, five dollars, that's okay, hmm, Okay, maybe. These are little Hazel Atlas uh, hairpin or Newport saucers with no cups. Ah! In amethyst. And you can either call it hairpin from this embossed design or it's also called Newport. It's made in the 30s by Hazel. I wish that were a little bit cheaper. That would be nice. That's a nice blue for, for uh, the holiday season. Kind of an ice blue color. And it's good glass and it's not chipped, so that's a nice one. I need to look, research that and see what that's selling for. I mean, there's, you know, there's no doubt. There's stuff here today. Some pretty pink shell. That looks like I don't know who made this. Let's look and see. Oh, it's Royal uh, Royal China, Sebring, Ohio. Shell pink. Okay. Thirties pattern. Cups, saucers, bowls. Oh, how deco. I love that. Don't you love that? Can you see it? With the sterling silver edges. And these, um... Okay, is it an egg cup? Or a sherbet? <laughs> is it an egg cup? Or a sherbet? You guys argue that over. I think it's an uh, an egg cup with a big base. That's what I think. But hey, you want to you want to turn it that way and put your rice pudding in it? Go for it. It's pretty. Who is this? Oscar De La Renta. Okay. Six bucks. I mean, you can see there's some beautiful pieces here. There's a lot of old stuff. There's some nice china, some random depression glass. Here's a, this is uh, either, you know, federal or anchor hawking. I'm not gonna peel that off. Uh, but there's, there's definitely stuff here. But I'm being very stingy with my wallet. You make your money when you spend your money. That's an old, old 
The old dealers used to tell me that. Buy wise, Lee. Otherwise, I'll go home with boxes and boxes of stuff. Those are nice looking. See anything? I hope this is fun. I mean, I, I'm just rambling. What am I missing? I know I, I know I have a sterling silver thing down there. This stuff was in my parents' attic forever. I think they got it. I think they were given some of this at their wedding. And uh, let's see what it is, because I don't ever remember them using it. It's still in my mother's attic as far as I know. I know it's still there. Okay. Oh, Christmas cookies. Uh, oh no, I just spotted her. She's here. My nemesis. You want to see her? Oh, good, 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 good. She went down the other aisle. I backed up so she wouldn't see me. Here, I'll try to get you to see the top of her head. Hold on. I'm just gonna give you a quick flash. Get ready, get ready. There she is, that's all you get. <laughs> I'm sure she's very nice, but she gets the good stuff sometimes before I can. I guess I don't. You guys know what that is. I really hope you can see this. Uh, it's what happens when you leave crystal in the sunlight and these old candlesticks, uh, which are 80, 90 years old, sat in somebody's uh, window. And this is why, how they turn purple. But it takes a long time for these to turn a purple like this. And some people don't like it, and they say that it ruins its value. Uh, that's up to the beholder, I suppose. But it's a beautiful collection. You can see this one didn't get any sunlight, but these did. I think they're beautiful. What say you? Nice collection of them. And they are old. There's one that's iridized. About 19, you know, 1910 to 1920 talked about that one. There's some depression back there and some pink depression down there. And this one has got that thick paint. You've seen me talk about that paint before. I think Lancaster might have made this, but uh, it, it might not be. Indiana did some of this and there were other companies that painted their glass like this in the 1920s. They did a lot of this in Czechoslovakia as well. I wish there were two, because I like the painted, painted glass from the 20s. I really do. It's another depression stick. Probably from the 30s here. Etched. Lots of nice candlesticks. Look at these over here. There's another one from the 20s. The paint. Painted detail. that one. Be a, a, a colonial style, this one. Wow. Somebody really got rid of their old candlestick collection. I'm not seeing any that I, that I would like to buy. If there were two, I would buy these two. I mean, I would buy the pair. 
And if that were in better condition, I'd buy it. Just to keep as an example. Look at this one. But that's all by itself as well. It seems like it's probably missing a lid. And that's broken. I'll let you see the, the uh, candlesticks again. It have turned purple. That one's even etched. Now this one, I really am sad that this is in such bad shape. I should buy it because I don't think I've ever found one out searching before. I can't remember who made it, but it's from the 20s and it has a painted parrot on it. And I've seen it many times in my depression glass books. So I just thought I would show it to everybody. It's uh, $2. There aren't any chips on it. Um, but there's a lot of paint missing from the parrot and there's a lot of damage to this fired on purple color. So that might clean up, but I don't know. I'll think about it just to have an example of this glass, because I, I do like it. It was cheaply produced in the, in the 20s, and I've just never seen it out before. Can't remember who made it, but I really, really like it. And there's here's some more pink depression candlesticks down here. Lots of turn of the century, into the 19, early 30s depression glass here to be seen. Sure is. Okay. And then all this stuff. Ooh, hello. Oh, here's Wonder Woman. Let's see if there's a thermos in there. Look at this. How many of you sat at kitchen counters drinking a uh, Hawaiian punch in chairs like this? I love it. Okay, here's a tale of three candlesticks. Now, I know it's hard to tell because there's all that stuff behind it, but we have this one, this one, and this one. Now, one of them is relatively new, and the other two are quite old. Can you pick out the new one? Which one do you think is new, and which one do you think, which two do you think are antique? Give you a close up. First of the base. And now the tops. <clears throat> okay, this guy wants to be antique barley twist, and he is not. He actually still has a little bit of his Marshalls sticker on the bottom. And even without that Marshalls. Uh, sticker. The barley twist is uh, not not deep enough, not thick enough. There's hardly any finish on it. It's a new piece of wood, and if it were antique and it were barley twist, it would be made of oak. Um, and so this one is new. Now the other two, on the right and the left, are quite old and actually beautiful. These are both made of mahogany and they have a really nice old finish. And they probably date to about 19, anywhere from 1910 to 1920, 25, something like that. The early, early part of the uh, 20th century. I really like candlesticks. I love this one very much. It's a single stick. It's, uh, I just wish there were, uh, I could find its mate.